Just a short 10 minute video which shows the live capture of Eta Carina uh, when I was setting up this little portable mount right here in this image. It's a Star Adventure on a camera tripod uh, which is a manual push to equatorial mount but it does have an RA tracking motor designed for DSLRs to track the sky for wide angle exposures uh, but as you can see if I just zoom in on this I'm running a little finder guider 50 millimeter by 150 or oh, sorry by 162 millimeter focal length uh, which gives an f3.2 so pretty fast optics but achromatic so purple fringing this is a ZWASI224 camera designed for planetary it will do DSOs uh, not cooled so you need to take darks for the very hot pixels that it generates but very low noise very low noise camera and I've simply fashioned an adapter out of a piece of aluminium and the shoe for the finder guider and tapped a 1 8 bolt hole so that I can screw it to the Star Adventure very inexpensive rig I leave it set up now in this room like this so when we relax the coronavirus restrictions on my, my townhouse complex common area when they relax that I can go out there in the common area and do some imaging from home that was the idea so Bordel 6, Bordel 7 skies, two street lights out the front facing south, uh, which is where Eta Karuna is, but uh, very, very quick and easy. So this is the video capture I took on the night. Uh, it's live. You can see down here it's 11.16 uh, on the 3rd of the 5th. Uh, this is when I set that rig up. Ever since then it's been raining. I was hoping to make a video, um, you know, a proper video out there uh, with the common area open after coronavirus uh, but it's been raining ever since I took this uh, video so this was the night I tested it just after um, finding a break in the cloud even back then and um, without further ado I'll, uh, I'll walk you through what I'm doing so first up I'll just um, start the video and show you so I originally went full screen and uh, I've got the camera connected and I said you know what I'm just going to uh, I've got to find the object so I'll set my usual maximum gain 400 to find and frame the object and then I'm going hang on a second that camera's connected why is it totally black should be saying something at 400 gain so I disconnect the camera and reconnect it expecting to see an image come in but I don't even wait then I just go straight over and set my normal four second exposures at 400 gain for find and frame and by this stage I go what the maybe it's cloudy so I click the auto expand on the mini histogram and I go dolt there's no cloud or anything that is because I've left the cap on the camera <laughs> we all do it Bingo, now it's too bright, I take off the auto expand by resetting the mini and I can see bits of the nebula. So I go righto. Uh, I'm just going to quickly pause the video there and have a quick chat about something. So I'm pausing the video, right? I get very accurate or relatively accurate within a half a degree on my manual push to of the Star Adventure amount because I use a smart tool digital level that's accurate to one tenth of a degree so I convert my latitude and the declination into a degree of tilt of the uh, scope <clears throat> so I set that tilt which is really going to end up being the declination with the digital level and I use a similar process on right ascension uh, using uh, something down from Zenith which right ascension away from uh, the meridian is called the hour angle and I convert that into a, a decimal degrees and use the same one tenth of a degree accuracy of the digital level and I usually get within a half a degree and that's what's happened here I'm about this uh, has a 1.7 degree field of view on that little finder guider and uh, that's left to right and up and down is about a degree and blow me down I'm about almost that exact half a degree off using that digital level it's a very accurate way of using uh, what is pretty high magnification actually 1.7 width and about one degree vertically uh, in this field of view 
Um, very interesting way and quick way to to set up a manual push to star adventurer to find stuff. So uh, without further ado, I'll let the video keep going. So now I say which way do I have to move the mount? I give it a couple of pushes. I very gently push it in one direction or the other to see which way and I go that's the right direction I've got to go up so I take a fistful of the knob and away I go another handy tip to know which way at four seconds you can just gently push on the scope in a declination direction or an RA direction and uh, just by the pressure of your finger on the well it's not a scope it's the finder guider in this case you can actually see the, the image move in that four second frame and you know which way you've got to move it then it's a very very quick and easy way to work out the right direction <coughs> excuse me so at this point I know I've just about got it framed the way I want to I want to go just a little bit higher I remember doing this yep there we go and uh, once I get it looking right I actually look at the histogram and decide I could actually start stacking that because there's no lost data over on the left hand side of the edge I'm looking at the peak and where it all goes I'm going that, that I could stack I'm not losing data but I'll go my regular for a bright nebula I go around about 280 and that's what I set 250 to 280 as usual and I always set 15 seconds on this rig if I'm not guiding which I've started to do lately <clears throat> 15 seconds the most I get out of it it's very old, 10 years old, and the gears aren't meshing right, and all sorts of pulses, who battery, who know. So, at the end of that 15 second shot, that gain of 280 will apply, and you'll see the image brighten. Boom, there it is. I just make sure I've got the right dark applied for that gain in exposure time. And uh, I did. I'll have a quick look at the first one at the top, which is 120 seconds, and then I'll make sure the the bottom one is selected 15 seconds 280 dark frames yep all right so i'm ready to start stacking so i click live stack and here we go this is our end-to-end -end unadulterated video just wait boom that's one frame stacked i'm going to pause it there it is one frame stacked look at that image just gorgeous so it just shows what you can achieve using very entry-level equipment okay a lot of practice but it does show you very bright object but bordel six bordel seven skies with two street lights right outside the front south facing porch because uh, of coronavirus i was just on my porch facing south with two street lights in bordel seven brisbane in a townhouse complex of 144 townhouses with a shopping center right across the road as well so there you go all I had on that thing, by the way, was a Bada Moon and Sky Glow filter, which is a fairly mild filter. It does have a UVIR component, but you can see I've still got weird, very blue, fringy type stars going on here. I let it stack for about uh, four, and you'll watch the image get less noisy. You can see a bit of mottling down here. And I wave my mouse as I'm watching all over the histograms and stuff, just looking at the colors. I'm a little red-green colorblind, so I kind of like to, I don't really trust my eyes on what I see, so I tend to hover over these and see what they're set to from last time I used. I compare the, look at the histogram. Now I'm dragging it over here, I'll just pause. By dragging that to the left, it gives me a better view of what this histogram here looks like. And this histogram, when you're stacking, is actually a kind of a different view of the stacking histogram sort of a le less height more smoothed out version of this histogram and what I'm particularly checking is the alignment of the peaks of the red green and the blue peaks about there I guess channel and obviously I adjust the sliders to get those peaks lined up because it's very hard to line those peaks up just looking at that there <coughs> excuse me anyway that's what I do so we stack two I'm looking at the live stack information there frame stack two 15 seconds there's frame stack three 45 seconds exposure another 15 seconds and I'll pause the video 15 seconds should be coming up shortly and it'll be stacked four 
Still going. Four, there you go. Four stacked. Boom. So there you have it. A stack of four. It's not full screen, of course, but still to, in quotes, do video astronomy, in quotes, observe with a camera, in quotes, near real-time observing, whatever you want to, acronym you want to call video astronomy, it's pretty darn sweet. Um, so there you have it. Thanks for watching.